Hey guys, so next up we're going to give you a quick introduction on how to use bullseye. It's a nice simple puzzle that we can just turn some wheels and say we had some kind of symbols on the wheels. When you turn them into place and get the correct order, then we can fire off an event from that. So for example, you may have a puzzle in your level where you need to put something in a certain order and you need the player to um, rotate um, blocks or wheels into place to get them there. So we'll, we'll show you how to do that now by using bulls. So all I've got here is a wheel in my level. I've just a UDK stock asset um, from the HU Deco mesh. It's a vent wheel. I've just um, kind of changed the draw scale up and converted it to a mover. And uh, I've also added collision to that. I've also added some triggers. Uh, I've not changed any of the properties. The only thing I've changed is hidden so I can see that in game. I've also added a point light toggleable and just giving it a bright color uh, with a quite high brightness and I've also turned off the enabled on there so that's the setup and I've just duplicated it three times so now let's open Kismet to get this sequence underway um, just in an empty space we'll right click and add a new trigger and trigger used and we'll turn off aim to interact and interact distance to 200 and we'll also make sure we change the max trigger count to zero otherwise we'd only be able to turn the wheel once uh, next up we need to actually make the wheel move, so we'll hold M for a new matinee and left click and just double click the matinee to open it and with the wheel selected in your level we'll right click new empty group and just call this wheel and we'll just close Kismet now to give us a bit more room and we want to turn the wheel, I'm going to turn it over one second, it's completely up to you how long you want the wheel to turn um, but we'll just add a new movement track here, uh, so I've already got the first keyframe in place and we'll just scroll along to one second, press enter and the way you want to rotate this if I go into my side view is I want to go one full sec section of the wheel so if you see me rotating I've, I've gone between two points just there so that's 73 degrees on my wheel so it's just between these two points here and so when we play it it'll go one section uh, a couple of things we need to change in our Kismet if we just open it back up. We need to hook up the used into play and we also need to check uh, re rewind on play and no reset on rewind. Okay, And if we've got our max trigger count to zero we should be able to scru um, scrub the wheel around a full 360 degree and keep it going. So if we go up to our wheel and we'll just press E and it moves the wheel so that works. So next up, uh, we need to kind of have a sequence in here to check when the wheel is in place and when it's not in place. So we just move our matinee to the side. And the way we can do this is to add a new action, go to switch and switch. And uh, we'll change the link count to five. Uh, the reason why we changed it to five is if you look at your wheel on the side view, we have five sections here that we can rotate. So uh, after the fifth one, that would be a 360 degree rotation. And if we check looping here, then it'll continuously loop over these five sections. Okay, so ho however many sections you've decided to rotate, say you've rotated 90 degrees, you'd probably have a switch with four links uh, for each rotation. Uh, so we'll just hook that up to the used for now. Uh, so that's the in. And now we need to um, set up our bools. So just f um, if you hold B and left click, we can create um, two bools. Uh, well, three altogether, uh, but two more. Uh, or you can alternatively, you can right click, new variable, and bool. And we'll just call this wheel01, and we'll copy the name, uh, the var name, and we'll change this to wheel02 and wheel03. And make sure it's in the var name, not the object comment. Uh, if you've got blue writing above your um, variable, then you'll know that's in the wrong place. So we've got some variables here now, and make sure they're all false. And now we can check um, whether these are true or false. So to do this, we'll move our matinee across again and we'll right click, new action, set variable, bool. And on the first link, we'll have a bool here and the value will be a true variable. So if we just right click on this red tab here, create new bool and we'll change B value from zero to one and one means true, zero means false. And our target will be the first wheel. So we can create a name variable to speak to our, our bool here. So I'll just hold down N and left click. Alternatively, you can um, go to the new variable and named variable. I'll hook this up to the target and in find var name, we'll just paste our wheel01 into there. 
okay? And a, a good way to test things out will be to create a log. So I'll hold down L and create a, a player variable, hold down P and left click. So we've done that before. Uh, alternatively, you can create a new variable player, player and just hook, hook them up there. Uh, and then we want to name our log um, something like um, in place or what, whatever name you want to give it so that you know that that wheel's in place. And lastly, we want to add a toggle in here that turns on our light. So we'll hold down T and left click. And from the output, we'll turn on. And with the light selected, we'll add that as our target. So now, when we press the switch the first time, it should display a message saying in place. And it'll also turn on our light and change the, the value of this bool to true. So I'll just give that a test. I'll move that wheel, it says in place, and we can see a green light coming on there. So that seems to work well. So now, we, because we got it looping, we want um, a backup kind of system in place to reset that bool back to false if they take the, the bool out of place. So to do that, we can just um, select this part and copy and paste. And just to give us a bit more room, uh, we'll move this down, move this one up so that the true one's on the bottom and the, um, this second one will be on top. So we'll hook this up to the second input. So as soon as we fire the switch again, it moves out of place, we'll change this to false. So let's change that to zero and break this link out of there if you did copy and paste it and just put that into turn off. So that means that when we press the first link, it'll say it's in place and it'll work and then it will go to set the bool to true. So the wheel is in place. But as soon as we press this switch again, it'll change it back to false and turn off the light again. So we'll just give that system a quick try now. So I go up to our wheel, press E, and it says in place, the wheel comes on, press it again, and the light turns off. So we know that's working. Uh, you could add a sound in there, so we'll hold down S and left click, and when the, the bool is true, we'll play a sound. And you can find any sound in the content browser, really. Uh, if you go to the UDK game content, hit in sound cues and just go to menu, there's quite a few good just um, bleep sounds in there. So I'll just use UT menu checkbox, select cue, and just plug that into my Kismet um, just by plugging it in there. So then the sound will play. And apart from that, I think that's pretty much our setup. So we'll hold Control and Alt and left mouse drag and press C to comment that. And we'll call that wheel or one. And then we will select everything again and copy and paste it. And then paste it down again. And so we'll double click on the second box and just change this to wheel or two. And change this one to wheel or three. And because we copied and pasted stuff, it means all our values are still the same. So it still uses the same trigger and same bools and same uh, actors. So we'll go to the second wheel in our sequence and select our trigger and update trigger by right clicking assign trigger and whichever number you have. So it uses the new trigger. We'll also update our light in the second sequence and we'll also update our wheel. And we also need to make sure we update our two bulls from wheel one and rename them to wheel two. So I'll just do the same process again for the third wheel. Update the trigger, the light, and the wheel. And also our two bulls here. So now we should be able to put all three wheels into place and it should say in place. So we'll just check that out now. So we'll go to the first wheel, press E, it's in place, the green light's on. Second one, in place with the green light on. And third one, in place with the green light on. So we know that that setup works now. Uh, and now we need a way to compare when all these um, bool values are set to true. So the way we can do this is to first create a remote event by holding down R and left clicking. And it says event name, we'll just type in uh, compare here. 
and we can leave the event to the side but uh, move the action of the remote event here and we'll just plug this from the, the true bool to compare and this means that whenever this bool is set to true we will compare uh, this with the other three and then we can fire off an event so we'll just click on that and copy it and then paste it down here again and we'll also paste it down here and then the way we can compare bools is to right click new condition comparison and compare bool and then hook your remote event up to the in and the, what we're comparing is the three values of the wheel 0, 1, 0, 2 and 0, 3. So we create a, a, some name variables again by holding down N and left clicking. And we'll call this wheel 01, copy that, wheel 02, and wheel 03. And they should all have tick boxes so they're speaking to the right wheel. And then we'll just hook them up to the bool. And now whatever event we fire off here, or whatever action, sorry, um, that will mean that all three wheels are in place. So say you wanted to open a door, you could have a matinee firing off true, or you could have an AI firing off here, or some kind of um, event to happen. For now though, we'll just add a log by holding down L, and hook that up to there. The target will be the player, so hold down P and left click and make sure that player zero is in there. And so now when all three of our um, things are in place, it should play, fire off a log saying um, fire event. Okay, so we'll just test that out now. So we go to our first switch here, we press it, that one's in place, and then this one's in place, and then thirdly, we should have a fire event when we press this, and it says fire event. So this will be your fire off event when all the, the player has got all three wheels in place. So to round things up, we'll just comment this and, and compare bool states. So they know what that's doing. And then just to sum up the overall sequence here, uh, we've got to use trigger in here. We can use it as many times as we want and we can rotate this wheel as many times as we want in a 360 degree. Uh, whenever it's in place, we set the value to true and then we, we fire off a compare seeing whether, whether these two uh, bulls are true as well. It, this will only fire off when all three of these are true. Um, and so when you move it out of place, it will set it to false again, so that even if the other two are in place, we've had a backup sequence and all three won't be true. And we've also got a light in there. To add difficulty, uh, you could remove the log, that was mainly on for testing, and also the light, so that the player doesn't know when they're in place. They have to find clues in the level and they have to make sure they hook them all up in the right sequence, rather than just rotating it five times and then a sound being played that they know they've got it in the right place. It adds a bit more difficulty so you could remove that sound as well in there. Because uh, we've just got it on the first key press, uh, you can change that. Um, you can move them down the switches uh, however you want, just move them down in, in order. So say we've got one and two here, we could um, delete this by holding down Alt and left clicking and we could put this into four and then we could right click on this input, cut and paste here. And so now when we press the third one, it goes in, in place. So we'll just right click, play from here to show that. And so now when we press it the first time, nothing will happen, but then when we press it again and then once more, then it will be in place. So you can do that for the other three other three wheels in the sequence just to add a bit more variation in there. But apart from that, you just need uh, an individual sequence for each one of your wheels. Say you have four different wheels, then you would be comparing four bulls here uh, and just have a play around. Uh, but that's just a quick introduction on how to use bulls. Thanks.